Good afternoon, everyone. It's Jane getting myself set up here. I hope you're all well. All right, getting my link for my text people. If you want to be on that text list, and I forgot to send out a text the other day because I was so busy with pictures, all you have to do is text me hello to 860-385-6369. And then I'll let you know when I go live, if I have anything um, brand new, stuff that's kind of important that people have asked me to let them know about. But I won't inundate your inbox, your telephone, with all of that. So here we go. All right. So I was asked about layering IOD molds. And... I have to tell you, I've done a lot of layering of these molds. This was a couple of years ago. I did a, let's see if you could see this, um, a little workshop on silhouettes. And I used, look at all these um, seashell molds, right? When I glued these on, these were all wet. So these were wet molds, they were flexible. And that's what I thought about doing. Now I've started to let a lot of my, hey Shannon, hi there, hey Marianne. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Shannon's got her flowers, and I know Marianne's smiling. <laughs> um, but when you use these molds wet, and I can be quite literal sometimes, it's like, all right, well, yeah, you know, the starfish, if you if if you pick them up out of the ocean, they're flexible. But when we find them, they're pretty rigid. So what happens here is everything, and it looks really beautiful. This is a subtle thing, but everything kind of you know falls in as you glue them when they're wet. Um, and let me show you this one too. This is another little project that I glued this bow on wet. So it kind of, it's flat here to the board and kind of rises up over the inside of that heart. And when I did my, um, you know, that tea towel rack that I did, I had all those piles of molds that I had made, you know, doing demos and stuff and I let them dry and I kind of and had it in my mind that you really couldn't work with them as well when they were dry, which is not true. They work really nicely wet and they work really nicely in between and they work really nicely dry. It depends on what your outcome is, what you are planning. And I suggest that you plan something like the um, key mold, which I love because I love them all, right? But if you, if you make your keys and then let them dry and then glue them, you're not going to have, you know, this part of it all kind of wavy and, you know, and I'm, and I'm also describing when you're doing like multi-dimensional layering, because that's what I'm talking about today. So you'd want this to be really straight and rigid, like an actual metal key. So those, next time I'm going to let them dry, because I did, I was trying to, I was layering them and putting them on top of each other. I'm like, yeah, this just doesn't, it doesn't look right with these, this part bending. So that's one that you'd want to try out dry. And, it, and I encourage you to experiment like I always do. Do a test first, see how you like it. Here's another little layered with, with my favorite um, German glass glitter. And it's, it's, I think I let these kind of dry in between. So you see more dimension in this, okay? So they're not as wavy and kind of conforming. And then this one, I love this one. This one I did with the frames mold and the cameo mold on top of decoupage. And I glued this on wet. This was all wet. And I kind of, every time I'd walk by, I'd push it down a little bit. What happens is, is because the top is drying faster than the 
in between, it starts to kind of lift up, right? Curl up a little, contract a little bit. Isn't that pretty, Shannon? I love that. I took an old book page and I put that down in this little frame. But I would walk by it and just press it down a little bit. I wasn't like being super picky. I just wanted it to conform to this um, frame mold that's underneath it. And I did flatten out that frame mold before I put her on there. Hi, Candace. Candace, you're down in South Carolina. Welcome. Thanks for joining. So, and here, I don't have my tea towel rack because it's up in my sewing room and my husband's on a call and I'm like, I'm not going to go up there right now. I'm going to bring, the dogs will end up following me back in here. It'll be a whole drama. But here's one I did with dry molds, molds that were already dry. And you can see, see here's the little bee. It gets very kind of dimensional, right? It's very flat. Um, so that worked out pretty well, right? Kim, hi Kim. Kim is saying, I'm in love with all of the molds, especially the seashells. It's one of my favorite. And how many years ago did that come out, Kim? I use that mold all the time. I just love it, right? Emma, hi Emma, thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, the, the seashells, I have, I have a bunch of favorites. The keys, of course, you know I love laurel. Cameos, um, frames. And what was the other one? Oh, and I love the um, feathers, the wings and feathers. All right, now this is the new frame. It's called Frames 2 Mold. It's not that new, but I made these two probably about an hour ago. I did hit them with a blow dryer a little bit. These use a lot of clay and they're very wet. You're not sure. It was a while ago though. So what I wanted to show is how I layer the wet molds today. I explain the dry molds. I'm going to show you how I layer the wet molds. And I made these two little ladies just to demonstrate. The other thing I want to show you, like I love this mold, this frames mold just as it is. I'm not going to mess around with it. This one, I just feel like these corners are begging for something. I just wanted to add something to them. So art molds your favorite, Candace. I know. I, they're the best. I wish I had the nerve to bake in them. I just get so nervous and I'm not a baker. I'm like, oh, but those cookies and the chocolates look beautiful. So what I did, getting back to the mold, is the frames mold. What I did for these corners is I took some clay and I pressed it into the top of the key mold, right? So just this part, and that's what these are, right here, right? And I'm going to glue those now right into the corners. And they are starting to dry, and I, I do want to have them conform more. I don't want them kind of floating up rigid. But this is what I'm doing just to add a little something. Isn't that pretty? Though, and they are clay. Hey, Michelle, these are Candace. <laughs> oh, it is. I love layering this stuff. It's very sculptural. Um, but yeah, I use parts of the molds. And remember when you're, um, say you just want to use some petals of one of the mold, you, you make the mold and use your X-Acto blade to cut out the section while it's still wet of the mold that you wanna use. It works really, really well. So what's going on right now is these are starting to dry, right? So I gotta get these glued on. And what I'm going to use, I, use, I either use original um, Tacky Glue by Aileen's, which is fabulous, or I use the Quick and Thick by Titebond. And I have to tell you, I love this spout. And I just got a new thing of Titebond and they're not making the spout anymore. Hey, Barb, hi there, thanks for joining. Barb, I'm talking, I'm being picky. <laughs> but this spout is 
the best. Like it keeps the whole thing, it goes on, it keeps it clear. It never gets dried out. And now I'm bummed that they have just a regular kind of pointy spout. So, move this out of the way. I always put some glue down on a palette like this. Look at me, I'm, maybe I'll just keep filling this up with, with either Aileen's or um, Tight Bond. I find them very similar. Oh, Michelle, Michelle is saying, so happy I found you. Love using the clay and molds. I'm with ya. I have more projects around my house of um, this these things and I'm going to, I know, the I, that spout, right? It, the spout is the best. And frankly, it makes a big difference because there's nothing worse like when I'm messing around with my Aileen's and you see I kind I had to kind of tap uh, tape it on. Nothing's worse than it getting clogged and you and it's this glue is so thick it takes an hour anyway. It's like oh I don't want to deal with it. All right, you better stock up, <laughs> Candace. Candace is going to be buying up all the tight bonds. <laughs> okay, I take my little. You know, natural bristle brush that's really old. And I put that glue on and I really load it on. Now I do, I used to put it all the way out to the edge. Now I kind of focus it in the middle because I know when I press down, the, the glue is going to move out, right? Yeah, oh, you're going to refill it, right? Isn't that the best? I'm going to refill my bottles. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> the little things in life thrill me, honestly. Okay, so I'm going to put that on, and then I'm just going to press this down. Now, it is dry enough that I'm not going to ruin that design on the top, but it's not totally dry, so I can kind of have it conform, right? conform right to that frame. So I'm gonna do the rest of these and then I wanna show you how I work with the middle. And I read today, and I'm not sure where I read it, some people are using veg fruit and vegetable dehydrators to dry these molds out. I don't have one, but isn't that <laughs> the best idea? Thanks, Kim. Uh, you know what I'm going to do with this, Kim? I'm making, and everybody, I'm making refrigerator, giant refrigerator magnets <laughs> with these. I said, ooh, I want to do something pretty in my kitchen. So I ordered some little magnets for the back. And I'm going to put them up on my refrigerator. And I don't have a lot on my refrigerator. Sometimes, you know, my grandson, he loves to put his letters up there. Then he wants to take them down. He likes to put them back up. So, you know, it's kind of ever evolving. But I thought these would be really beautiful. Okay, just brush that on. And I'm putting a nice blob. And then I'm pressing it in. And the best time to paint your molds, I find, is when they are dry, especially these really detailed ones, because the brush, just by going back and forth over the surface of the mold, can mess up the detail. And you don't want that. All right. So there, I think it's even prettier. Right? It's more kind of, it makes it a little bit more detailed as this one over here, just by adding in those key tops. All right, now what I have, okay, remember these ladies when we were learning about flooding, right? This is a dry mold. Oh, let's see. Shannon said, with a larger frame mold, you could cut out the center and use on the frame. Oh, that's such a good idea. I didn't think of that. Oh, Shannon, that is a really good idea. So what Shannon is saying is cut this out, right? Save the clay. Obviously, you do it when it's wet. 
and then use that as a frame. That is a brilliant idea. And I would even take like some pictures and print them in sepia tones to make it all go. Shannon, thank you for that. Thank you. That's a really, really good idea. And that would be a beautiful ornament too on a tray. And Candace is saying definitely, and you could water the paint down some. Yep. And yep, that flooding, and it gets right into those creases. Absolutely. I love it. Hey, Linda, thanks for joining. She's saying it's a great idea. Linda, I'm all about layering. The more you layer something, I just think, you know, it's like we're not being minimalist with these designs, right? It's all about being kind of really rich and deluxe and luxe and all of that. So layer, layer, layer. Yeah, Candice, Shannon, that it, really, really, really great idea. So thank you for sharing that. So here's a, a rock hard, you know, mold. And if I were to put this on now, which I wouldn't because we've got dry going on wet, you probably could, but I don't know that, you know, I might wait for this to dry, um, this one. But, you know, it, it sits on top. So if you did want to do something like this, where you have that really ultra dimension, right? It's not going to blend in like this one did because I was pressing down the mold. Um, I would wait for this giant mold to dry. Then I would put this on, right? Center it really well. Put a nice big blob of glue on. And it's almost like a little shadow box at this point, right? Even though it's not in a box because you've got so much dimension. Barb's like, I want to do this. Barb, you have to. <laughs> right? We're all going to have these all over our kitchens. <laughs> it's such, it, it really is such a great idea. I love that idea of making the frames. And you can put in anything you want in there, right? I mean, really, it's such a great idea. Hey, Sid. <laughs> How are you? Nice to see you too with your smiling little faces. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I have so much fun with this. I really do. Meeting you guys. Um, I created or made these little cameos, right? This lady with the fabulous kind of grapes in her hair. Let's see if the camera gets that. Really sweet, right? Oh, thank you, Sensational. <laughs> her name, as she, I think, I think um, sometimes I've seen it as Sin, like Cynthia, but it's Sensational Hutchins, which I love. That reminds me of the old, I remember, man, this was even before my time. I watched the repeats, but the old police woman, and her name was like Pepper. You're Sensational. I love that. Candace, yes, I love this. Well, I've made a ton of ornaments with these, and they are. They're absolutely exquisite. This was one of them for like a kind of a beachy tree, you know. I lived, you know, near, not, I'm not on the water like some people are in Connecticut, but it's really big in Connecticut down on the shoreline, that whole look. So I want to put this on, put these ladies on, but I'm going to have them conform, okay? So, and I'll show you how I do that. These are also drying. They're in the process of drying. Barb, you can't see the chats? Hmm, that's really weird. Barb, you know what you could do? It's like refresh, refresh your whole Facebook page and see if they come up and then click on the picture I don't know if you're on a laptop or if you're on your phone. I do everything on my laptop. Uh, but try that because we got some really, really creative people, as always. Um, it's sin. One day someone said I was sensational. <laughs> and she went with it. I love it. Oh, I love that. It, her, so her name is Sin, and somebody called her sensational. That is the best. Okay, so I take my old brush gonna get my type on glue and I'm gonna really blob this on again I'm not gonna go all the way out to the edge it just might be me but I kept getting that little halo of glue and so many times I just like the look of this clay with nothing on it just the white matte clay 
Okay. So I've got to put this on. I always make it a little bit higher. Oh, oh, you're on. So you're watching on YouTube, Candace. That's right. I'm, I'm streaming on YouTube also. And you can see the comments there. That might be why, Candace. Okay. So you see where my lady is, right? I have more space on the bottom than I do on the top. I just like the way that that looks. And then I'm just gonna give her a press. I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna give her a press down around the edge. And that is how I glue on. So it has more, it conforms more to that shape underneath. So people are watching, so I'm, I'm streaming today. Barb is asking, so where is everyone watching from? So people must be watching either Facebook or YouTube. You can, I can see your comments, but no one else's. Maybe you guys, maybe, oh, Barb and Candace, are you both on YouTube? Sometimes I'm not so quick on the uptake here. <laughs> That might be why you're seeing only each other's comments because you're on a different platform. You're not on Facebook. There you go. Sensational. Sin just said she's on Facebook. So that's why um, all the comments aren't on one place. Okay. Now, look at how pretty this is. Ugh, I love it. I'm going to glue this one on also. Same thing. Blob that on. And I'm going to put this. The, mo the hardest part is getting this nice and straight, right? So it's not, you know, kind of wonky. And that's not very hard, but it's, I find it's the, the thing I'm, I'm most careful about. And I'm doing the same thing. I like more space on the bottom little bit less on the top and I just press down and these have been drying as I said now about an hour so I can get my fingers on there and press and not smush out the detail oh Barb is telling Candace to get on to Facebook and Barb now you can see us all right Yay, we're all in the same place. So that's it. That is it. And you, if you wanted to, you could take one of these frames. You could put one of the shells on another one of the cameos. You can do the big lady, you know, here would look beautiful over here. You could cut out the middle, right? And make that a frame, which I think is an absolutely brilliant idea. And you can continue to layer things on if you wanted to. If you took like the little, little tiny, there's those cute little birds. Let's see, where are those? Here. Oh, I'm embarrassed. My molds are really filthy. Oh, Candace has to go pick up her nephew. Oh, she's thanking us for, for inspiration and instruction. Candace, thanks for joining us. And I hope you have fun with your nephew. I, I hope to see you soon. You see these little itty bitty teeny weeny little birds would look adorable kind of flying around, you know, these molds. So that's it. Can you show the big lady again? This one, Michelle, this is the, this is the biggest of the cameos, right? This one. And I layered her over, and I've done it a bunch of times, this mold in the original, the first frames mold. So it's this one over this, and I did do, put I glued her on when the mold was um, wet, right? And so it kind of conforms, it looks like one piece. 
so pretty. Um, I, I just love this stuff. You guys, that was, that was it today. If you have any questions, I'm reading these, um, comments here. Oh, you got it. All right, Michelle. Any questions at all, you know, you can always ask me in the comments. You can ask me over on YouTube for sure. And thanks, by the way, I'm over 800, I think I'm over 800 subscribers now. So I'm really excited. I can't wait to get to a thousand. But I think I'm going to leave these white. I'm going to put some magnets on the back. And if those aren't the fanciest refrigerator magnets, I don't know what is. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everybody. This was so much fun. Today's Thursday. Oh, absolutely, Michelle. Join us again. We do some neat things in here. Everybody's got really great ideas. Oh, and by the way, like I always say, if you're not in the Painted Cottage Facebook group, definitely join us in there too. There's a couple of workshops already that we all put together in there. Um, and it's just a lot of fun and you could show off your work and we can all see it. All right, everybody. Today is Thursday. Having Monday off threw me a little bit. So I'm going to try to come on tomorrow with something. Um, I'm hoping to show you the grandfather clock. Uh, I have to get my husband to stand it up so I could take some really good pictures of it because it's lying down. It's like, it's like, you know, lying flat and it's really hard for me to get a good picture of that clock. Oh, sensational. Sin, thanks so much. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. I will either see you tomorrow